Hello everyone and welcome to Season 4 of the Ottawa Senators Franchise Mode in NHL 21. Now after winning the cup in year number 2, we unfortunately um, got beat in the playoffs in year number 3. Pretty early on in the playoffs, I believe it was round number 1. Uh, so we're going to start off the year number 4. Uh, have a couple of games simulated, just was trying to get contracts to um, RFAs and some coaches. But that's been dealt with. Here is a look at the team for year number 4. Corey Grant up to a 92 overall. Already has three goals, four points in two games. He was their second overall pick in uh, the first draft in 2021. Playing with Schuessla and Tachuk, they have a plus three. So playing like a 95, 90, and 91, that line should absolutely tear it up in the NHL this year together. Uh, Colin White, Claude Giroux, we brought back to free agency and Jaden Schwartz. They have a plus three playing like an 88, 91, and 89. So an extremely good second line as well. Then we got Connor Brown with Josh Norris and Nick Ritchie. They have a plus three. So the top nine has a plus three. So the third line played like an 85, 86, and 87. And fourth line is very solid for Menton, Brown, and Batterson. All 82 overall, all 24 or 25 years of age. So should be pretty solid for uh, the four lines. Shabbat Brandstrom is still a top pairing for defensemen. They have a plus one, so Shabbat playing like a 92. Brandstrom playing like an 85. Chikrin and Smith playing like an 86 and 85. And then we have Thomas Harley, Nartem Zub, Saban in pairing. We did trade away Matt Murray in the previous episode and signed Igor Shesterkin in free agency to be our new starter. And we have Philip Gustafson backing him up. So that should be a very good goaltending duel. I mean, we could really rock with those two goaltenders. I'm sure they'll each have a lot of playing time. It's a very good goaltending tandem. Either or can be our uh, starter any given night, really. As for special teams, power play plus three on both units. To Chuck Giroux, Stutzla, Shabbat Grant, and then Richie White, Schwartz, Brown, and Brandstrom. Here is a look at the four man. We got Stutzla with To Chuck and Grant still together with Shabbat. Penalty kill is a plus three, and uh, the three man penalty kill has a zero. So that's very solid. As for the HL team, very excited for Lance Okpozo. He's 18 years old, a low elite 73 overall. Sniper, he was our 26th overall pick in the draft uh, just his previous offseason in 2023. Uh, pretty good at hands, except for putt control. Very good slap shot accuracy and wrist shot power, but bad slap shot power and wrist shot accuracy. So, does have uh, some confusing stats a bit there. Very, very all over the place, but... Hopefully, he can uh, develop well for us. Malmi Vara here. He's a left winger, 20 years old, 78 overall, medium top six potential. He was the second round pick in 2021. Those two guys, I'm hoping they can grow. We got some pretty good young talent in the AHL apart from that as well. I mean, we have Shapik, 81 overall, and Leckett in 80 overall in the third line. So, our AHL team should be very good. Uh, then we have Jordan Brunette and Krill Kulin, which I'm excited for on defense. Jordan Brunette, medium top four potential, already 72 overall at 20 years old. He was a first round pick in 2021. And then Krill Nikulin was a third round pick in 2021. 74 overall at 20, low top four potential. And we have a pretty solid goaltending as well. We actually have Hugo Alnefeld, 79 overall at 22 years old, medium star potential. And Kevin Mandelis, uh, 23 years old, 73 overall, low fringe starter. As for a quick look for the power play, I put the younger guys with the best potential I want to have there. Lance Pozo, Oli uh, Malmivara, Kirill Nikulin, and then we have Igor Sokolov, and we have Jordan Brunette in the second unit there. So a pretty solid team down in Belleville. We have a very good team here in Ottawa. Uh, we still have the same coach is Ty McKinley. And looking at his stats, he's very good. He won us a cup in year number two. 70% team fit. Really likes the young guys. So that's perfect for our team. So we're just about set to go into year number four. Hopefully bring back another Stanley Cup to the city of Ottawa. All right, so this team is good. We're at the trade deadline with already 91 points, 42 wins. Tim Schuza has 90 points at the trade deadline. 32 goals, 45 goals for Corey Grant already. He's the sniper of the line. And then to Chuck there, 14 goals, 56 points. I mean, I guess Schuza and Grant are pretty much both snipers. 
Uh, Schuessler is on pace for 100 plus points, which would be career high. He's only three points shy of his career high in uh, points and five goals shy of his career high in goals with basically 19 games left to go. So he's going to break his personal best and he's already up to an 88 overall. So he went up by one. Corey Grant still 92, Tachuk still an 88, Giroux and Schwartz, both of them doing very well which is great to see even white and brown the bottom six guys um shabbat 41 points plus 30 that's awesome chick 31 points a plus five branch from 29 points a plus 26 i mean that's a shutdown it that's a shutdown as it gets shesterkin and gustafson so 33 11 and 73 shutouts pretty solid stats especially shesterkin 2.56 goals against very happy for that um in terms of the ahl Wow, very, very good. I want to see the record of Belleville. 37, 14, and 5. Mami Vara already 61 points in 56 games. 26 goals for Lance Pozo. Uh, 74 overall at 18. There, Mami Vara, 78. So, Pozo already went up a bit. Uh, Greek, 76. Shapik, wow, that team is very good. So, we actually have the potential to win both the Calder Cup and the Stanley Cup. Both the Belleville Centers and the Aura Centers are first place in their respective divisions. The Phantoms are first in the uh, AHL. We are first in the entire NHL by a pretty big margin, by eight points ahead of the Avalanche. So we're going to go into the trade deadline. I don't know if I even have to make a trade. If there's anything that could really improve the team, I might look at it. But uh, I'll definitely won't make a trade just to make a trade. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But let's see what's available. Dylan Larkin there, 93 overall. He would be a rental, 10.6 million. That's a big contract there. Uh, Gurianov, 86. Kunin, I mean, our four group is very, very solid. Um, as it was last year in the trade deadline. So, I mean, last year we did trade for Jacob Chikrin. Um, so I'm not sure if we really need to make a trade. I'm just going to take a look quickly and see if there's anything that's worth it. All right, guys, I will try to make a trade at the trade deadline after all. I'm going after Evgeny Malkin. So I noticed that they want um, Thomas Harley and they're offering me Malkin and another defenseman in a pick. But I'm going to try to edit the trade and get Sammy Vatnin. Uh, they're offering us a 79 overall. I'm going to try to get it a bit better return in Sammy Vatnin here. 83 overall has 28 points. He's an offensive defenseman at pretty good speed, pretty good stats all around. And he would actually fit perfectly on defensive pairing too. So I'm sure either on his second or third pairing, he would fit. Evgeny Malkin, 84 overall at 37. He's a bit slower, but 49 points, 24 goals there. His shot is still insane. Great hands. Uh, obviously, he's very strong. 96 points, which would be huge for the playoffs. He would be perfect for our team. I'm going to try to trade away Logan Brown, who's currently on our fourth line uh, with uh, 12 points. So we do have a plus three in all of our top nine. I'm sure Malkin would have a spot in there to play either in the second or third line. We have Shusa, Giroud, Malkin. That would be an incredible center debt getting a fourth back. So Harleen Brown for Malkin and Vatnin. Is that going to go through? Trade is accepted. Welcome to Ottawa, Evgeny Malkin. Well, I wasn't expecting to make that big a trade at the trade deadline. But I mean, I said if it can improve our team, I would do it. We're going for the Stanley Cup. We're going all in. I think if Genny Malkin fits all those criteria, he's won before. Uh, he's a veteran. He's amazing. Um, there's Jeff Petrie. Uh, 6.2 uh, million for an 80 overall. Yikes. I'm not going to take that contract. So much as I love Jeff Petrie in real life, he's one of my favorite defensemen. He's really Montreal's best defenseman in real life. He's been in Norris' conversation. But in the game, I'm going to decline that. So I'm going to play around with the lines to see what works best. Now here's an updated look at the lines. We have Evgeny Malkin on line number two. They have plus three. So with Giroud Schwartz, he's playing like an 87 overall. So Grant Schuessa to Chuck, Giroud Malkin Schwartz. That is an incredible top six. I mean, that's going to help us in the playoffs have that veteran leadership from Gino Malkin on his last year with 6.2 million contract as well. Which being on his last year is basically like a rental. And it would be awesome to see Malkin win the cup with Ottawa. Maybe he would retire after that as well. And then we have Sammy Vanden on the third pairing defense. Been 83 overall in the third pairing. So that's some pretty good debt. We saw Shesterkin, Gustafson in goal. And as for special teams here, power play. Uh, we have the same first unit. Malkin in the second unit still giving that plus three. Four man there. Uh, Stutzla and Malkin are two centers. Penalty kill actually has a plus three there in the four-man penalty kill. Three-man just has a zero. So 
let's finish off the year. I'm going to take a look how good uh, Evgeny Malkin does with the team. I'm going to take a look how many points he has is joining us. We have 42 wins, so we're definitely on pace. Over 50 shoots us on pace for career highs. I'm going to take a look quickly at the trades that went around in the NHL as well. Let's see if there's any big blockbusters. So Jacob Larson goes to Colorado for first, and he appears like a prospect. There is our pick with the Penguins. Uh, Murphy goes to Montreal for a couple of picks there. Shea Theodore and Kulak go to Rangers from Vegas. So the Rangers are stacking up on their defensemen. And uh, Jacob Trouba and Chris Kreider to the Stars. So Chris Kreider leaves uh, New York Rangers there. So as uh, Spurgeon goes back to Minnesota from um, the Dallas Stars. So nice to see Spurgeon back home in Minnesota. Let's finish off the year now. What I'm going to do is actually going to slow sim this game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I don't usually do this in this series, but I want to see if Evgeny Malkin can have any goals against his former team. And it looks like we won all but two games, which were actually in overtime. So we have a point in every game since Gino joined the team. So let's simulate this game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Evgeny Malkin's first game against his former team. And after one, Brady to Chuck scores on Lingren. McCann on Shashurkin after two. Two to one, Thomas Harley. Oh man, that hurts. Thomas Harley, who we traded uh, for Evgeny Malkin and Van, and he gets a goal against us. And they actually win Schutzla and Getzel. So, unfortunately for us, um, <laughs> Thomas Harley gets the best of that battle. Doesn't look like Malkin had any points. He was a minus one with three shots. And after year number four, President's Trophy, 122 points. First in the NHL, 117 for Tim Schuessler. He absolutely went off a career year. 59 goals, 102 points for Corey Grant. 94 points for Claude Giroux at 36 years old. To Chuck with 90. This team was crazy. Malkin, 34 goals. Let's see how well he did. So he had 18 points in 19 games with 10 goals. Yep, Evgeny Malkin helped us a lot. So we actually have, in terms of goals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 30-plus goal scorers and 4 90-plus points um, players in the in the team. So that's fantastic to see. Uh, Brown, Richie, even like the bottom six was producing a lot. Plus 50 for Thomas Shabbat, 59 points. Chikrin, 42. Branstrom, 39. A plus 43. That top pairing defense uh, core was just not letting in any goals at all. Sammy Vatnins is coming to Ottawa. Had one point, but he was a plus three on the third pairing. So that's good. He was keeping the puck out of the net. That's good to see. Even on the, uh, the bottom guys, I mean, Barrison, Fermentum, Zub, 20 points plus each. Smith with 18. In terms of goaltenders, Shesterkin, 43, 13, and 10. Four shutouts and 911 save percentage. Should have 254 goals against. Those are uh, Vesta caliber numbers. Even Gustafson, 13 and 3 as a backup. That was that has to be one of the best goaltending tandems in the entire league. That's insane. Now this team is gonna bring home some hardware. Tim Schutzla, Art Ross winner, 117 points leading the league. Strowman Kane there, the Blackhawks duo, 115, 113, and the Brink at 112. So that would have been the best line in hockey this year. Kuznetsov and Corey Grant. Crosby there with 99 points at 36. Larkin, Eichel, Getzel, Giroud there. And then Corey Grant. Maurice Richard winner. So we have the Art Ross and the Rocket winner. That's amazing. Ovechkin 57. Matthews 56. Now in terms of defenseman, John Carlson 75 points. 75 points and a plus 52 for Rasmus Dahlin. He's probably going to win the Norris. 91 overall, 23. And then in goal, of course, is Sturkin leading the league in wins after signing as a free agent. So we have the chance to have the Vesna winner for sure. Mrazic, Kakanen, Blackwood, Hart. So taking a look at the rookies now. Um, Vlasislav, Semenyov, 57 points. Brendan Darling, 34 goals for the Islanders in terms of rookie goaltenders. There is... Michael DiPietro for the Vancouver Canucks. All right, so let's see uh, how good Belleville deal. 107 points. So they're actually second in the league, first in the division. Lasuk Pozo, 66 points, 29 goals. That is fantastic. 
So we won the President's Trophy. We have home ice throughout the playoffs. And we're starting off with the Battle of Ontario against the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is going to be a fun battle. I want to see how the Toronto Maple Leafs look. Uh, so Nylander, Matthews, and Marner. 92 overall. All of those guys. That is an insane first line. Engvall, Tavares, and then Smith. And it drops down quite a bit after that. So... Uh, we definitely have the better depth than the Maple Leafs. With chemistry, we have a better first line overall, but I don't know if they have better chemistry as well. Uh, defense, Sandy and Lillian Green, so they go with the young guys for a top pairing. Flurry, Morgan, Riley, Sparrow, and Brody. And for goaltending, they still have Freddie Anderson, 85 overall, and Vilainen. So in terms of goaltending, it is pretty much a toss-up. Uh, defense, I think we'd have uh, pretty similar. I mean, they have a pretty good top uh, four, but ours is definitely better with Shabbat and Brandstrom. Uh, fours, they have uh, first lines are pretty much even in terms of overall, but we definitely have the better depth. We're overall a better team on paper, but we know in the sim it doesn't always matter. So hopefully we can get out of Toronto with the win. First two games are in Ottawa. Let's get these W's. So game number one, we lose. We lose in OT in game number two. Oh no, going into game number three. Okay, 8-2 win. Momentum is back on our side. If we can tie it up in Toronto, that'd be huge. 3-1 loss. We're down 3-1 against the Leafs in round number one. I mean, our team had 122 points in a regular season. We can't go down like this. Come on, three games in a row, one at a time. Game number five, 6-3 win. All right, so we're still in it. Game number six in Toronto. Come on, boys. Force the game seven in Ottawa. 6-3 loss. That's unbelievable. How can a team with 122 points in a regular season not make it past round number one? That That is just crazy. And sometimes, no matter how good you make your team in the sim, it doesn't matter. The sim engine luck is basically what it is. It's luck. So that, that really sucks. Drew at 10 points. Uh, Stuart Grant were very good. Shabbat. I mean, taking a look at goaltending here, Shashurkin, 2-3. and three. I mean, he had, like, he led the league in wins in a regular season and only got two wins in the playoffs. So, definitely heartbreaking, especially against the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're going to see how Belleville does in the playoffs. So it looks like they're actually down in round number one. I think it's going to be in a decisive game here, and they win. All right, so Belleville is still in the playoffs in the AHL. Hopefully they can win a Calder Cup. They're facing in the Laval Rocket. Both teams had 50 plus wins. All right, going to simulate this series here against Laval Rocket. Um, Cole Caulfield actually made his debut for the Laval Rocket uh, last night at the time that I'm recording this on Saturday. And he had two goals and one assist. So very excited for that. Uh, for Caulfield to go with the Habs, uh, hopefully soon. If not this year, definitely next year. We beat the Laval Rocket playing against the Phantoms here. Uh, looks like we actually won three games in a row to start off that series. Can we get the sweep? There you go. 7 nothing sweep for Belleville. We're 11-4 and four right now in the uh, AHL playoffs. And facing off against the Ice Hawks or the Silver Knights. And it looks like it is the Henderson Silver Knights against the Belleville Senators. I'm going to simulate um, just the first three games to start. And we win two. We lose once. So we're up 2-1 to one in this series. We lose, so to actually tie it up, it's a 2-2 two two series now. We win, we're up 3-1 against Henderson. I'm just going to simulate this game here. Game number 6, going for the Calder Cup after 1-1. One. One one, Goodrow and Flip Schlepik. Game Period number 2, uh, all pre kittle scores. And they win 5-1. Wow, so we're going into game number 7 of the Calder Cup final against the Henderson Silver Knights here. Home ice advantage in um, Belleville. Here we go. Period number one. Two to two. Benson and Kapaka. Lemieux, Stevenson. It looks like they have Ilya Sorokin in net. After two, three to two. To, uh, Benson scores for us. We have the lead. Uh, let's see if we can get that Calder Cup. Come on, boys. Only 10 minutes to go. We weren't able to get past round one in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but Belleville looks like it's going to be a different story. Still a minute with a goal there, and it's 4-2, to two, only three minutes to go. I'm not going to go through the whole celebration because it does take a bit of time, and it's the Calder Cup. I'll save that for the NHL, but the Belleville Senators are 2024 Calder Cup champions. There you go. So you got a Calder Cup under our belts. That is fantastic. Next up, I want that Stanley Cup. Definitely a heartbreaking loss. And it looks like it's a rematch of 
15, I believe, the Chicago Blackhawks versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. And the Tampa Bay Lightning win the Stanley Cup. So they get another Stanley Cup for uh, Tampa Bay. 89 overall shoots that just went up. I just seen that. Back-to-back -back cups for the Lightning. Three cups in five years. Wow. Uh, of course, we won the uh, Presidents. They beat the Blackhawks. Stuza with the Art Ross and the Hart Trophy. Tim Stuza, Hart winner. Darlene with the Norris. Stuza with the Lady Bing. Wow, he's cleaning up. Calder to Darling. Consmite to Point. Vesta to Igor Shesterkin. There you go. So that's four individual awards already. And the William M. Jennings. That's five. Yossi with the Bill Master. Tim Flyers coach with the Jack Adams. Barzell with the Selkie. Ten Lizzie with the uh, to Stuza. And Maurice Rocket Richard to Corey Grant. Seven individual awards for the Ottawa Senators. Stuart I guess four awards by himself. I um, mean, we didn't get the one award that's that we want, the team award, the Stanley Cup, but very, very happy with the individual performances of those players and the collective team effort to help Shusterkin get the Vesta and the William M. Jennings. So next up will be the draft, but I want to take a look quickly at the playoff tree as well. So Tampa Bay beats uh, the Blackhawks in 7, the Flyers in 7, the Leafs in 5. Blackhawks, so it looks like it went all 7 games except the first series in 6 against the Blues. So we're going to go into the NHL entry draft here and let's see who won the draft lottery. So it is Arizona Coyotes go from 3 to 1, so they win the draft lottery. Oh, Claude Giroux does retire as a member of the Ottawa Center. So it looks like Evgeny Malkin is going to still play for another year at least. 1,098 points, 357 goals. So congratulations to Claude Giroux and a fantastic career. Pavelski and Wheeler, over 1,000 points each. That's awesome to see. Pavelski and Parise getting close to 500 goals. Unfortunately, we're not able to get there. In terms of goaltenders, Mark andre Fleury calls it a career 552 wins. All right, it's going to go into the NHL entry draft now and uh, see what we can do. So we're going to definitely ha have probably a mid-round pick, I assume. So we're going to be, oh, that's a pretty late pick, 27th overall. Of course, he won that President's Trophy, so it's going to be a late pick. So 27, let's see if there's any gems that we can maybe get. Oscar Peterstrom, that's a pretty cool name. Uh, so it looks like there's no guarantees past like, the top five. Uh, let's see if there's any gems. There's no gems. It doesn't look like it's going to be an extremely cheap draft. Let's see uh, who we're going to pick. Taking a quick look at the top guys here. So uh, 83 overall power for medium elite goes to the Coyotes. 81 sniper, 79 sniper. Pretty good players there. Let's make our pick at 27th overall. We have some guaranteed top nines. This guy could be a medium top four. Uh, there's really not a lot of options. A so low elite guaranteed. All right. So Leon Ulbrich, left winger out of the Dell, 18 years old. Take him. He's a guaranteed low elite and he's uh, 64 overall. So definitely not bad. So this player here, Michael Lackison, left defenseman. He's uh, three quarters guaranteed to be medium top four. Hopefully he can be medium top four. Could be a defensive prospect for us. So medium top six. So definitely not bad, but not the greatest. No third round pick, so we're going into round number four. Um, this guy here, 150, uh, could be medium elite. Craig Gabrowski, I'm going to take a shot at him. Uh, 58 medium top six. All right, so next pick is in round number five. Uh, could be a low elite. This guy could be a defenseman. It's got recommendation. Uh, let's see down on the list. Medium top six forward. I'm definitely going to take him. Michael Strait out of the Dell and he is 51 overall medium top six okay so pretty much some top six top nine picks in this draft nothing too crazy you're not getting those elite players unfortunately uh, this guy here is scout seem to like him Rickard uh, Matt Tannen a defenseman could be elite he's 55 7 D not great and we have our last pick of the draft here and let's see, maybe one of these guys could be elite. Let's take uh, Dave Domi out of WHL, out of the Broncos. Let's see if he's a good pick. 55 low, bottom six. And definitely not a very strong draft. Um, next up will be the re-sign phase. All right, here we go. We got the contracts to take care of. Shabbat up to a 92. Stu's up to a 90, Kachuk up to a 90, White up to an 87, Chikrin up to an 86, Schwartz 86. Man, this team grew like crazy. 26 million of cash space. Let's see the big contract Corey Grant wants. 13.6 for six years. 
All right, let's see if he's going to take, um, hmm, let's see, goes up quite a bit. Six years, 13.250. Let's see if he's going to take that 13 million, but he's worth it. Nine two overall at 21. That's pretty much over half of the cast space on one player. Uh, in terms of centers, we have some work to do. Uh, but to say, I'm just going to qualify those guys that we got to qualify and then see if Malkin wants to come back. He does 4.9 for an 83 overall. Definitely going to consider it. Uh, Shapi wants a two way deal, 81 overall for sure. That's basically a free uh, fort line forward for us. That's pretty good. Left wing. Uh, we're pretty much set with those wingers for Menton Kopaka. Just going to qualify them. Both are 82 overall, which is good to see. Um, let's see here and then right wingers we have white and brown and a couple of HL guys in terms of defense We have our core our four top guys are signed there Brandstrom has not grown yet, which is a bit concerning since last year, but we're gonna keep him uh, Then in goal we have Shesterkin only making 5.3, but only for one more year All right, so Corey Grant accepted his deal. So we have him for six years 13.25 so we have him until he's uh, 27 years old. He's fantastic. Only 6.2 million cat space left, but we got the majority of the team re-signed now. Al Schutzla, Batisin, Norris, Shapi. I could bring back Malkin. He would want 4.9, so basically 5 million there. In terms of left wingers, we have our guys. Formentim, Kopak, I'm going to have to re-sign them as well. And in terms of right wingers, yeah, we're going to probably have to let Malkin go. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to afford him. Evan in 83 overall at 33. He wants uh, 5 million for four years. I'm not going to give him that. Zub there wants 2.175. So definitely not bad. Uh, Shabbat, Chikrin, Brashram, Smith. I'm going to let Vatnin go. I um, don't want to give uh, almost 5 million to a third pair in defense. I mean, you could have Brown and Lajoie. They're on two way deals. Clag maybe even. So. I'm kind of wait on Zub. I'm not sure if we're going to re-sign him. Did have 20 points, though. Plus 22. Definitely not bad. Uh, in terms of goaltenders, Gustafson and LNFL. We're going to have to re-sign Gustafson. 4 million for a backup. It's a bit too much there. I'm going to keep them as RFAs. Um, in terms of the UFAs, we have to sign, of course, Malkin and Zub. We have 6.2 million. I uh, mean, I'm not sure if we want to bring back Malkin. He did very well. 18 points in 19 games for us. But he's down to an 83 overall. So... He could definitely go down even more. I'm just going to let him walk to free agency and uh, Zub as well. I'm just going to let Malkin walk in free agency. Maybe we can get another option for center there. Uh, Artem Zub, I mean, he only wants 2.1. But I'm going to let him walk. We can maybe get an 80 overall two-way uh, man in free agency. So there you go. I'm going to wait on the phase. He do have limited cast space after a big contract to Corey Grant. So we're going to have to... Uh, Try to work around that and make sure we build our team to be competitive next year as well. So looking at our team, uh, we have Grant Strusa to chuck on our first line. Uh, Nick Ritchie is actually up to an 85 overall as a power four. So if we can have him as a power four with Schwartz as a sniper, we can get a center playmaker. That line could be very, very good. Uh, in terms of the bottom six, we have White, who's an 87, Brown, 85. Uh, we have a couple of options there in terms of center. We have Badrasin, Norris, Shapi. Uh, so I think we're pretty much set on the forward group. Maybe a third line left winger, but at the most, we need a second line center. In terms of defensemen, maybe get one or two bottom pairing guys as well. Uh, so let's take a look in free agency what's available. We've got to keep in mind, we still have uh, to pay our backup goaltender uh, as well. So uh, Luke Kunin wants 11.8 million. That's interesting. Shafley up to 90 overall. Wenberg, uh, Kasha, Ble, and Matthew Tachuk. I mean, it'd be pretty cool to reunite the Tachuk, but we really can't afford him, unfortunately, right now. Uh, he is a power forward, of course. As much as I would like Matthew to chuck, I don't think it is realistic and possible at this time, unfortunately. Now, I think I'm actually going to bring back Evgeny Malkin and give him, I'm uh, just going to give him $5 million for one year. 37 years old. He's 85 overall. So I think he actually went up since going back to free agency. But given he is a playmaker and he would fit per, uh, pretty good on four line two, that's what we need. We have Schwartz as a sniper, Richie as a power forward. I really think that line could work. So I'm going to bring back Evgeny Malkin for one year. I gave some um, contracts to some AHL guys. I gave some 2A contracts as well to some guys. So 
Uh, let's see if Kenny Malkin will return to Ottawa for one year. Should have signed him in the re-sign phase, but uh, as long as he comes back, uh, it'll be worth it. Let's see if he's going to come back for one year. Come on, Malkin. There you go. So if Kenny Malkin does come back, uh, we're able to re-sign him. That's fantastic. Uh, in terms of goaltenders, we have to bring back Gustafson, LNFL for sure. Let's see, I don't think Gustafson or LFL will take a two-way deal. So Gustafson 2.2, we basically only have, basically don't even have money to re-sign him. But I'm going to wait uh, for the end of summer, see if the price goes down for Mantim and Kapaka as well. Hugo LNFL was given an offer sheet of 810000 So I'm just going to match that. I want to keep uh, LNFL for AHL team for sure. Uh, I'm going to see what we can work with cat space. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year, either they sign their qualifying offers or we can just get in for like a million or a two-way deal. Those guys that we have left, let's see what we can do. So it looks like Kopaka and Formentin both want less than a million. So 975k for Formentin, Kopaka 850k. That is awesome. Whenever I have a chance to save a bit of cash, that's perfect. So Kopaka size and Formentin size as well. So our four group is intact. Just got to resign Gustafson being our backup here. So we have Shesterkin, Alnafeld. Alnafeld actually could be your backup going in NHL. But um, if we can have an 83 overall, it's even better. Uh, let's see what he wants. So 2.075. I'm just going to give him that contract. Uh, see if he's going to sign. I mean, that's the last guy that we have to sign. We'll just have enough cat space. Let's see if he's going to accept. Is Philip Gustafson coming back to be your backup? There you go. He is. So our team is pretty much set for now. All right. So this is the first look at the lines for next year. Grant Stusa to Chuck. Playing like a 93, 93, and 95 overall. That line should go nuts once again. Then Schwartz, Malkin, Richie. They have a plus 3, so the chemistry does work. Malkin is down to an 83, but with the chemistry, playing like an 86. Schwartz like an 89. Richie like an 88. White playing like an 88. Norris like an 85. Brown like an 86. Formentin, Badison, Kapaka. And then defense, Shabbat, Branstrom, Smith, Chikrin up to an 86, and then Clagg and Brown play like an 80 and 79. So definitely a solid uh, bonding pairing uh, pair there. Unfortunately, Ty Smith did go down to an 83, and Branstrom just hasn't grown, only an 84 at 25. I'm going to see what we can do. This is probably going to be the last year before I make some trades. Branstrom, if he doesn't go up more than that, I think I have to trade him before his volley goes down. Hasn't grown much. Was expecting him to go into the high 80s at least. Uh, in terms of our four group, I want to keep those three young guys. But I'm not sure. This team just is too good not to win more than one Stanley Cup in uh, five years. So it's going to be the fifth year. Just Shurkin, 88. Gustafson, 84. That's probably the better best goaltending time in the NHL. In the AHL, Lance Opozo, 75 and 19. I'm hoping that he can grow to be in our team next year. Brunette, Nikulin defense and then in goal we do have Ewell Alnafelt 23 years old and 81 overall Jacob Artukin 72 overall medium serve potential at 21 so we have a good goaltending situation even if we end up trading Shesterkin or don't resign him after this year we have some good younger guys and uh, hopefully year number five is um, the year we win our second Stanley Cup. But if you guys enjoyed, do leave a like, would appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out any of the episodes. Thank you guys for watching and as always, have a great day.